All right, well, maybe we should get started. I think so. Okay. Okay, so we'll do with our chimes first. We will. All right. And remember on that third chime, raise your hand when you cannot hear it anymore. Now, friends, we sing our Be Still and Know song, which is our call to worship. And um, even if you don't know the words, you can um, go along with the sign language. Uh, Mr. D is going to put the words up on the screen so that you can see them. Thanks for the reminder. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Play. Yeah. Can you see that, Miss Ellis? Okay, here we go. Ready? Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that Jesus is Lord. Be still and know God's word is here. And God's word comes to us not only in the Holy Bible or the story of Jesus's life and of God's people, but God's word came to us as a person in Jesus. And we remember that person of Jesus by lighting a candle before we begin our service and remember that Jesus is the light of the world and that Jesus's light is with us always. noisy. Now our story today, friends, comes to us from the Bible. And in a minute, we're going to sing our song um, with all of the Bible books in it. But first, I'm wondering if any of you can read what this says here. Mr. D, can you read what that says? I'm looking. <laughs> What if I maybe brought it a little closer? No. Uh, mm. Friends, can you see it? I can read it now. What does it say, Mr. D? Then their eyes were open and they recognized him. Hmm. Has anybody ever been to an eye doctor and gotten an eye exam. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've seen a chart kind of like this where the words at the top are big and then they get smaller and you're asked to read all the way down. What can you see now? I am seeing Jesus. Okay. Oh, Jesus helps me to See that he loves me. And there is nothing to fear. Super. So, friends, there are many ways to see things and many ways to learn to see new things. Today in our story, we're going to be hearing about a way that people saw things in a different way. You know, Mr. D, if you would have used something like this, I oh. bet you would, you would have seen it a little better. That would have, you, have you know, I, I did. I brought mine with me. Let me find them. They're in the cupboard over here. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, I found them. Okay, good. They're not as fancy as yours. No? No, here they are. But they work the same. <gasps> there. <laughs> so High tech over here. Try this now, Mr. D. Let oh, boy. Let me make it bigger. <laughs> uh, seeing Jesus. Jesus helps me to see that he loves me. And there is nothing to fear. I saw it from farther away for sure. See? So even using your hands like that can help you focus. Our story today, though, 
we're not they're not going to use binoculars to see no oh, that's this we're is going kind of fun learn, though it is kind of fun isn't it we're going to learn how people got to see something better and understand it better with bread they didn't look through the bread but the bread helped them to see better <laughs> mr d when we sing our holy book song today we're going to get to the New Testament book of Luke. That's where our story comes from. So I think that our friends, when they sing, sing the book of Luke, that they should get up and jump and wave their hands. I wonder when how, get, yeah, yeah. I wonder who just by thinking of the New Testament books can, set, can tell us which book Luke is, what number it is in the New Testament. Yeah. Cause I just yep. did it in my head. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm thinking mm -mm. of that. Does yeah. anybody know? Answer it wanna... if you can. We'll hear you. Yeah. Or maybe they'll put it in the chat. That would be fun. All right. Let's yeah. sing it together and we'll see which book is Luke in the New Testament. First, second, or third. I don't know. Let's yeah. find out. Yeah. Here it is. Just had a little southern accent there. Here it is. <laughs> are the holy books tell me their names i'll take a second look this is god's holy word tell god's message to all have heard genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy joshua judges I'll tell you the truth about the book of Ruth on to 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, and all these things lead to Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job. I want to go to heaven in a righteous robe, singing Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Solomon's song, and the prophets are these, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Jay's lament, Ezekiel, and Daniel, and the lion. Den, Hosea, Joel, and Amos's tale, Obadiah, Jonah, in the belly of the whale, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk's cry, Zephaniah, Haggai, and then Zechariah, the last Old Testament books reveal that Malachi points to a brand new deal. These are the holy books, tell me their names, I'll take a second look. This is God's holy word, tell God's message to all have heard. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of Jesus, and then move on to Acts and the letters of Paul, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, all Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, move on to 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, and James, two books from Peter and John, all three jude the dude and revelation you'll see that these are written that you might believe that jesus is the christ and his grace received these are the holy books tell me their names i'll take a second look this is god's holy word tell god's message to all have heard terrific Yay. Now, friends, before we do our story, which is really kind of like what in, in um, the big church they call the sermon or the homily, before we do that, we like to say a prayer of illumination. And basically that's saying to God, help us understand the words that, that we're about to hear and learn about. So let us say our prayer of illumination. I'll read it. Ready? Be with us, O oh God. As we gather to learn from your word. Amen. Now, the stories in the Bible are true stories about real people. There's some fictional things that the real people may tell us, but the Bible itself is real. And Jesus is real, and the people that we learn about in the Bible are real. And our reading today comes from the book of Luke. And sometimes to help us understand a Bible story, we need other stories that help us to kind of put it into sense for us. I wonder if you have ever been out 
shopping in a store or um, in a market and you see someone and you think, oh, that person looks a lot like my teacher. But you're not exactly sure because you've never seen your teacher outside of the classroom. Maybe you're in Target and you're pushing a cart down and you look and you think that looks like my teacher, but I think my teacher lives in the school building and um, doesn't like go out. So how could that be my teacher? Or maybe you are going for a walk in your neighborhood and there's someone along the road who's cutting the grass in their yard and you think, wow, that is probably my teacher, but I've never seen my teacher cutting the grass before. Or maybe you've seen that person at the swimming pool. Or maybe you've seen your teacher working in a summer job. Maybe they do something um, on a farmer's market. Or maybe they work at a restaurant in the summer. Um, you, and you think it's them, but you're not exactly sure. And you need some kind of really good hint. Like if your teacher then walked up and held up maybe a whiteboard and started doing a math problem in the middle of Target, you'd say, oh, I knew it, that was my teacher. But up to that point, you're not too sure. Well, this happened to Jesus's friends. So I'm not going to read the whole passage, but it comes from the book of Luke. And it says, on that same day, the same day was the day that Jesus was no longer dead. Mary saw that he was alive again. Rumors were spreading that Jesus was alive and people weren't really believing it all that much. They kind of heard it was supposed to happen, but it was kind of really too far outside of like truth to imagine. So on that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village. It was called Emmaus. And Emmaus was about seven miles from Jerusalem. So they were walking seven miles and they were talking. They were talking all about, I can't believe what happened to, to Jesus. And we knew that things were going to be bad. And he told us that he was going to die, but nobody really believed it. And then we find out that Jesus did die. And now Mary says that, that he's not in his tomb anymore. He's not dead anymore. And they're just having this conversation as they walk. Because it's seven miles. They have a lot to talk about. Well, this stranger comes up and he says, what are you talking about as you're walking along? Well, they stopped and they were rather sad. And there was one who said, um, are you the only visitor in all of Jerusalem who's totally clueless? Doesn't really say clueless. Clueless about what's going on, unaware. Where have you been for the past few days? Have you like been hiding? And the stranger says, well, what things? What things have been going on? And they said to him, well, things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all, all the people as a prophet. But our leaders handed him over to be crucified and killed. And we'd hoped that one day he was going to be the leader of everyone, but now, but they ended up killing him. And all these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and they didn't find his body. They came to us saying they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he was alive. And one of them named Mary actually saw Jesus. Jesus looked at the man and he said, you foolish people. <laughs> I mean, he's a stranger and he comes up and he calls him foolish. You foolish people, don't you know all of the stories that Moses told, that all the prophets told, that Jesus himself told you? And you don't believe that he could be alive? And they're like, no, we really, we knew it was going to happen, but we don't believe it because we haven't seen it. So as they're walking along, it's starting to get later. And the gentlemen say, the disciples say to this stranger who's walking with them, look, why don't you come to stay with us? Um, you can have a meal with us and stay before we, you know, before you move on. Well, they all sat down. And as they were sitting down to eat, the stranger took the bread that they had 
and he broke the bread. And as he was breaking the bread, they realized oh, it's Jesus. You are Jesus. Oh my gosh, how did we miss that? It's because they weren't expecting to see Jesus where they did. And, and there he was. And it just like the night before he died, when Jesus broke the bread and shared it with his disciples, he broke it and shared it with them at that meal. You know, friends, Jesus is with us now. And Jesus is always with us, even though we may not see Jesus. It's important that just like the disciples didn't recognize who Jesus was, that we're looking carefully with our eyes to try to recognize Jesus. Jesus doesn't have to come in front of us and break bread for us to say, oh, that's Jesus. Maybe it's a smile that you see. Maybe it's a tender, caring word that you give to someone else. Maybe it's when you just have this desire inside to help someone. Those are all times when Jesus is with you. And it's important to always be looking because God doesn't give us binoculars to find Jesus. God gives us special messages and things like bread. Mr. D, do you have a song for us as our song of response for our story? Well, of course I do. Oh, good. And I bet that a lot of people already know this one, but I thought it was just perfect uh, for that passage from Luke today. And it's the song called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And it should be on your screen right now. Uh, but I'll sing it all the way through. And you can, if you already know it, you can sing it at home. And then we'll kind of learn it together. It's a pretty easy song. It goes like this. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Good. Let's do line by line. I'll sing the first line, then you sing the first line at home. I'll go first. I have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, your turn. I have. Now the next one, we're going to go real high with our voices and sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. Your turn. third one is the same as the first one. Remember what that sounded like? It went like this. I'll go first. I have decided to follow Jesus. Your turn. And then the ending goes like this. No turning back. No turning back. Are you ready to sing the whole thing with me? Starting at the beginning. I ready and sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Just you all by yourself. Sing along at home. I could hear everybody. Yeah, I could I hear too. you in my head and it was beautiful. I hope you're yes, singing at home. It was. Now, friends, usually um, I forgot to ask earlier, but if we have any birthdays that we need to recognize that have happened since last Sunday, um, or if there are special prayer requests that you would like us to include in our prayers for the people, we just ask that you add that to the, the chat or the um, to the Facebook uh, notes section and, and Mr. D can read those. 
We also know that we've had um, a lot of birthdays in April, Mr. D. About how many were there of our friends? There were a lot. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking at it right now. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten that we know of. So, friends, what we'll do is, if any of you have had birthdays that we haven't remembered to include on our list, um, you can put that onto the um, Facebook chat now, or we'll just sing the happy birthday song. Um, and then we'll also do our prayers at the end. So any special prayer requests you have, we'd ask that you add those as well. Do we have some in there, Mr. D? Uh, we don't have any prayer requests yet that I can see, but okay. I'm sure we'll have a okay. few coming in. Yeah. And so friends, these these disciples that were on the road to Emmaus, it's interesting because they say dis two disciples or d disciples were on their way. And one of them was named Cleopas or Cleopas. And um, none of the disciples that we know that were the original 12 and then the surviving 11 had that, that name. So it could be that there were actually more than 12 um, and we just know the names of the 12 that were listed in the book of Luke. Um, it could also be that people became followers of Jesus throughout his ministry and that they were considered to be um, disciples. We don't really know um, because this isn't a name that we've seen before, but we know that this man was one of the people walking. Might be interesting, Mr. D. What's about seven miles from your house? Do you have any idea? Oh, seven miles. Oh, you know what? Where I work in Swickley is mm -hmm. almost, is about seven miles away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm a little more than seven miles away from the church. I can't imagine having to walk all of that way, but the disciples had to, they walked everywhere. It wasn't, and maybe they could ride a donkey or something, but they, they had to do a lot of walking. So to walk from um, Emmaus, the town where they were, and we don't know much about that town either, um, to walk from Emmaus to Jerusalem was a long trip, might have taken them through some dangerous places, and Jesus had instructed the disciples to always go in pairs or groups of two, um, and that's why we hear that Cleopas was walking with another person, at least one other person, there might have been more, but Jesus had instructed the disciples to always go in groups. And that could have been for their safety. It could have been in case one of them needed help. Um, kind of interesting. And I think that's a message for us to always have someone else with us. Um, you know, just in life, it's good to be with people. And Jesus was telling us it's good to be with people. No prayer requests yet, Mr. D? Yeah, we have a couple coming in now. Okay, you want good. to sing our uh, birthday song first or after prayers? <laughs> Okay, so I'll put up the birthdays that we know of, and at the end of this, or during the song, we'll sing happy birthday, happy birthday, since we're not, it's going to be really hard to say all of those names at once. All right, here we go. Sing along at home. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Got a little carried away, sorry. It's okay. I think what's neat about birthdays is every one of us is different, but every one of us has a birthday because yeah. God knows how special we all are and God wanted us all to be a part of this planet. So um, we're all God's children and we all have birthdays. Okay, Mr. D, are we ready with, um, with our prayers of the people? Yes, I think we are. Okay, so I'll start and I'll open, and then Mr. D, you can read our prayers, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Okay? Sure thing. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together today. We are grateful for the times that we have to share messages of your word and messages of Jesus' love for all of God's people. Lord, we are grateful for our families and our friends and for all of those who are helping us in times of maybe being distanced or away from each other. And we're grateful that we have the love of you and Jesus to be our guiding light. We ask, Lord, that you would hear the prayers that have been shared by our friends. 
Um, Anne is saying that Joe's grand, great-grandmother is currently in New York, and she's 94, so um, they'd like to send some prayer requests for her health. Um, Rebecca Dick is uh, requesting prayer for the health care workers today. And Lord, we do ask that you be with the, the people who are alone. We ask, Lord, that you be with people who are older. We ask that you also be, Lord, with those who are the first responders, with healthcare workers, for those people who have to be out um, keeping stores clean and places safe. And Lord, we're grateful for teachers who are helping us even um, through computers to learn new things. Lord, we're grateful for the signs of spring, the signs of promise and the new things that are growing, the chances to be outside. And please, Lord, continue to be with us. Help us when we are afraid. Help us when we are lonely. Help us when we are sad. And help us to see joy and happiness in the things that we do. And to remember that smiling and hugging and sharing is a way that we are sharing Jesus's love with others. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, we close our worship service by singing Jesus Loves Me. And even if you don't know the words, you can do the sign language along with us to learn um, all about uh, multiple ways to talk. And Mr. D is working on a special Jesus Loves Me for the future. Yes, and uh, make sure you check the Facebook group if you're in the Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group and you're watching this on YouTube, reach out to Miss Ellen and she can get you in there. Um, but I'm going to need your help with Jesus Loves Me next week. So I would love if you would check out that post. I already put it in there and uh, help us out and help lead, lead worship next week. All right, here's Jesus Loves Me. Sing along. Miss Ellen will do the sign language. Here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And when we say the Bible tells me so, the words are coming out and being shared. That's what this is. The words are coming. It's the Bible and telling. And it's important to remember that we're not going like this and keeping the words inside. We're telling the words. Just as Jesus told his disciples that he loved them, Jesus tells us that he loves us as well. Nothing we could ever do is going to stop Jesus' love for us. We make mistakes. We, we mess up. We can tell Jesus we're sorry and, and we're forgiven just like that because we mean it from our heart. And you need to know that there's nothing that you could ever do that would make me stop loving you or that would make Mr. D stop loving you because you are children of God and you are special and you matter. And friends, we change our light from this light that's shining, but by changing it, we're not putting the light out. We're changing the light so that it can spread throughout the world and be shared with others.
eventually. And as the smoke goes out into the room, we remember that just as we can't see Jesus anymore, we can still spread the word of Jesus throughout the world. Jesus' light changed so that we can share it. You ready for the chimes, Mr. D? Yeah, here's our three chimes to end worship. See you, friends. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you next week.